the code that changed the world. Episode 1, Secrets in Code. Ciphers, Code Breakers, and Digital Encryption. Secret codes have decided the fate of queens and the outcome of world wars. From ancient ciphers to modern encryption, the quest to hide information has shaped history in unbelievable ways. Our journey begins in a torch chamber where scribes and spies first traded secrets in code. Segment 1. Ancient Ciphers and Deadly Secrets In ancient Rome, Julius Caesar shielded his battle plans with a simple cipher, shifting letters of the alphabet so only someone who knew the key could read it. He once sent a desperate message to a besieged ally, writing it in Greek and even tying it to a spear thrown over a city wall. Imagine the suspense. A Roman soldier scanning the skies as that spear arcs over ramparts, carrying a code that could save or doom an army. Caesar's code was a substitution cipher, each letter replaced with another, modest by today's standards. But in 50 BC, it was enough to fool enemies and ensure that intercepted scrolls revealed nothing. Ancient ingenuity didn't stop at Caesar. The Spartans used a cytail, wrapping parchment around a rod so that only a rod of matching size would reveal the message. Elsewhere, non-alphabetic symbols became keys to secrecy. Medieval monks crafted ciphers of strange glyphs, and even the Kama Sutra cheekily advised lovers to master secret writing for arranging trysts. Early ciphers often meant the difference between life and death, a lesson learned tragically by Mary, Queen of Scots. In 1587, Mary's encrypted letters, planning to dethrone Queen Elizabeth I, were cracked by a wily codebreaker, exposing her plot and sealing her execution. A few lines of coded writing cost a queen her head. Segment 2. The Codebreakers of War In World War II, a mysterious typewriter-like device sits in a wooden box, its keys gleaming. This is the Enigma machine, used by Nazi Germany to scramble messages into millions of possible combinations. German U-boats and tank divisions believed Enigma made their communications unbreakable. After all, it offered an astronomical 150 quintillion. That's 150 followed by 18 zeros, possible settings. But at Bletchley Park in England, allied codebreakers, including the brilliant Alan Turing, turned the tide of war with pure brain power and primitive computers. Picture it, it's 1940. And inside a smoky mansion-turned laboratory, young mathematicians race the clock adjusting rotors on captured Enigma machines and deciphering intercepted enemy orders. Their success was historic. By war's end, the Allies could read up to 10% of all German Enigma messages, foiling U-boat wolf packs and misdirecting Nazi strategy in decisive ways. In the Pacific, the US Marine Corps deployed the Navajo code talkers, using the complex Navajo language to encode messages the Japanese couldn't crack. Imagine listening to a radio transmission of what sounds like native chants or folklore. But in reality, it's a battlefield report guiding artillery strikes. The Navajo code was never broken, proving that sometimes a living language can be the perfect cipher. And in an ironic twist, Allied code breakers succeeded in part thanks to a Polish acquisition of an Enigma machine before the war and some clever espionage. Each time German engineers added complexity, eventually a five-rotor Enigma, Allied spies scrambled to steal new codebooks or devices. It was a deadly high-stakes puzzle. Even more astonishing was the great cipher of Louis XIV back in the 17th century. Developed by a father and son team, this cipher used numbers to represent syllables, 587 of them, and remained unbroken for 200 years. When finally cracked by Emile Bazaris in the 1890s, one secret message revealed the identity of the mysterious man in the Iron Mask from French law. Surprise, surprise, even a 200-year-old encrypted mystery had real revelations. These tales remind us that every code invites a codebreaker. As one 1940s codebreaker quipped, the finer the encryption, the sweeter the victory when it's solved. Segment three, the rise of digital encryption. Fast forward to the computer age, Encryption leapt from paper and rotors to electronic circuits and complex algorithms. In the 1970s, as silicon chips took over, a new kind of cipher emerged, one that would stump even the best human codebreakers without high-powered machines. 
meet public key cryptography. The ingenious idea that you could lock a message with one key and unlock it with another. In 1976, Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman published a paper describing how two strangers could agree on a secret key over public channels. A breakthrough now known as the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. It was as if two people could speak in riddles in a crowded room, yet emerge with a shared secret no eavesdropper could discern. The next year, 1977, saw the birth of RSA encryption, named for Revest Shamir Adelman, which used the mathematics of prime numbers to create unbreakable codes so far. Suddenly, cryptography wasn't just for diplomats and generals. It became the foundation for everyday digital security, from ATM transactions to internet logins. At the core of RSA is a nifty trick. You take two huge prime numbers and multiply them. It's easy for a computer to multiply primes, but unbelievably hard to do the reverse, factoring the huge product back into primes. This one-way mathematical trap meant that anyone could use a public key derived from the prime product to encrypt a message, but only the holder of the private key, the original primes, could decrypt it. By the late 20th century, code-making outran code-breaking so dramatically that new dilemmas arose. Governments grew anxious that criminals and adversaries might go dark behind uncrackable codes. In the 1990s, the US even classified strong encryption as a munition. Yes, as literal weaponry, subjecting it to heavy export restrictions. In 1995, a t-shirt emblazoned with a few lines of encryption code was legally considered a weapon. In one famous protest, programmers printed the code for RSA on shirts and posters, thumbing their noses at laws that said a mathematical algorithm written on cotton was akin to an assault rifle. Thankfully, those restrictions eased by the end of the 90s, and today you can export encryption without needing a weapons permit. Segment four, encryption everywhere and new battles. Every time you see a little padlock in your web browser or send a secure text, you're using the descendants of those wartime and academic ciphers. Modern encryption standards like AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, keep our bank logins, medical records, and private chats safe. AES, adopted in 2000 as the successor to the older DES cipher, is so strong that even with all the computing power in the world, trying every key would take longer than the age of the universe. In simple terms, a good cipher today is effectively unbreakable by brute force. Code breakers have had to get creative, sometimes exploiting human error or software bugs rather than the math itself. Yet the tug of war continues. When messaging apps like WhatsApp and Signal introduce free end-to-end -end encryption for billions of users, law enforcement agencies sounded alarms. Suddenly, drug cartels and hackers could hide messages as securely as presidents and CEOs. The debate over privacy versus security rages on, echoing the crypto wars of the 90s when the US government floated the Clipper chip, a scheme to give itself a backdoor into encryption, which was ultimately rejected after public outcry. On the flip side, everyday individuals rejoice that they can bank, shop, and love online without eavesdroppers. Did you know? The term crypto in cryptocurrency comes from cryptography. Bitcoin, for instance, relies on elliptic curve cryptography to secure transactions. Without these codes, digital money and blockchain would simply not work. It's cryptography that ensures your Bitcoin can't be stolen by someone who intercepts your Wi-Fi and that your online credit card number looks like gibberish to any would-be thief. But encryption's story isn't over. The next great threat to our digital secrets might already be looming. Quantum computers, more on those in a later episode, promise to crack certain codes that are rock solid today. For example, a sufficiently advanced quantum machine could potentially break RSA or Diffie-Hellman by factoring large numbers blazingly fast, turning our secure internet into an open book. Cryptographers aren't sitting idle. They're devising post-quantum algorithms to stay ahead of that curve, ensuring that even in the quantum age, secrets can stay secret. It's a continuous cycle, new locks, new lockpicks. From the simple substitution ciphers of Caesar to the mind-bending mathematics humming inside your smartphone, encryption has been a constant chess match between code makers and code breakers. 
We've seen ciphers help win world wars and enable e-commerce, and a t-shirt of code highlight the absurd power of an algorithm. The next time you tap in a password or whisper to a loved one over a secure chat, remember, you're part of this epic saga of secret keeping. The language may have shifted from paper and ink to electrons and prime numbers, but the goal remains the same, to keep prying eyes out and secrets safe. And as history has shown, when secrecy truly matters, humans will get unbelievably creative to uphold it. Stay tuned. In our next episode, we'll uncover the hidden software engines that operate our world, from the code deep inside your computer's core to the systems that keep planes flying. The journey through the code that changed the world has only just begun.